I don't stop on Wessex Blades this Sunday. I like Sundays. Um, I got these to do a, a small Kydex sheaf. These are a spur. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Kydex sheaf on these. And the, the reason behind these, uh, the design of this, is with the uh, the CAD cam, it saves me a, a mountain in time. Because if I was going to put those um, crenellations in there, it would be on a bigger stock and then drill a hole and then I'd have to grind it off. So I'm getting cut by using CAD cam. Um, a knife is this big without using that much steel in order to drill all the holes. Um, and the only other way to do that is obviously carbide, which is just you disappear all your bloody carbide bits. Um, and then the idea being is that it's just funky little knife with some brutal grip um, this is the big version 1 and version 2 um, I put power cord across from the holes across the top and then version 3 is actually used the holes to put scales on and then if you understand that the, um, the scales would make the knife look like that uh, so you get a, not as near as uh, as much traction beforehand but this has been on um, been in my drawer for about three years and I've never really got around to making them I just thought it was about time I had a play so I'm going to make a bit of a, um, a little necker kydex sheaf um, one's already gone because I offer my number ones to um, Mike from up north um, so there's already gone whether or not anybody's interested in one of these leave a comment on the video um, I'll probably put some on Instagram uh, in the next few hours or something but this thing's called the spur um, as I say, I, I can do different options on it. Uh, it's a little small. I might make a bigger one eventually. Um, but as I say, I can. You could have it like this with a paracord through the middle. You could have it with paracord going over the top, um, in and out of the holes. So that'll sort of give you grip if someone wasn't in that interested in having tractor tire, scrambler tire traction. Um, or I could put scales on it, and then you'd catch the first two. Uh, crenellations and the rest would be scaled over and, and you, you'd still sort of feel it but the scales would be uh, level with the, uh, the, the tops of the the, the, tap, the battlements as it were but uh, I call it a spur because it's some of the sticks in and, that, and that's what the grip is for uh, so I'm off into the garage to do a kydex sheaf and say I like Sundays because there's no post so this sort of time in the morning I can just belt on I haven't got to worry about listening for a knock on the garage door Right, crack on with that and uh, see you on the next bit. for Mike and this one for me. Right, I'm going to do some Instagram a minute and then uh, I've got some fair rods I want to play with as well. It's Sunday, so it's, it's a good See there. So like a big buyer of a mysterious little hole, this has a mysterious groove. It looks like a short ferro rod. Explanation. Come in. Oh, right. I think I should be centre frame. Yeah, right. Try that. Right. So here's the ferro rods with the groove in. 
to a rod with the groove in. Now what you can see, this is obviously it's, it's Wessex Blades left field consideration theory, don't go with the flow, go my own way. Yeah. Anyway, the idea behind this is like Scandies are great and they're easy to sharpen but then a few years down the road when you start being able to do uh, your, your sharpening better you, you can take on uh, a knife that's got a more complicated geometry which as an owner you'll be able to maintain right now when you start using ferro rods as a as a newbie uh, or as a, as a youth and you know coordinations or whatever um, you use the whole ferro rod length and you get mighty juicy sparks now I've seen some guys use their ferro rods and they're that proficient they've gathered their tinder so diligently they only need to work on the bottom 15 mil and they work on that, work on that, work on that and in the end that, that, that bit just wears and drops then they just move up the next 15 mil so as a user of a piece of equipment like this they're so proficient they don't need 65 mil of an 80 mil ferro rod exposed to get a fire and if it's a case of just using the bottom 20 mil you can always go back and forth to get more sparks anyway you don't need generally speaking the entire length that's one of the reasons I did the feared steel which is half of an 8 mil in a handle because eights are thicker and stronger than four mils okay so with that mindset and some clever dudes are setting them in fat wood and using the handle as fuel for the fire if you get what I'm right so what I've done with this is it's an eight millimeter ferro rod but it's sunk in let's say that far and so this piece of wood here which would be cherry and soaked in oil technically speaking is fuel um, once the cotton wool, once the old man's beard is lit as dry fuel that's soaked in oil it's an extender if you understand me plus the person who would have this kind of ferro rod doesn't necessarily need to use the entire length so if he has three uses the front half constantly using that until that wears out and is gone and then they're that good they can use this bit here the next third as it were and then there's another section again because it's buried into there and I put the groove in using the front of the tool as to where I would think there's enough still setting a handle with the epoxy that from that point to the back there's still enough to hold it in so that is technically sacrificial once you get to that last bit and then you can start cutting that off and making your fires. Okay, just an idea. Just I never, I don't know. I've seen it before. I haven't picked up anybody else doing it. But basically, it's a deep set ferro rod um, with fuel reserve of the handle. Um, now it makes it shorter. It makes it stouter. It makes it stronger. Okay, there's less chance of that ever coming out. That ferro rod is protected longer in terms of its coating um, and someone who's once they've got the hang of using a ferro rod they're only using the bottom bit anyway they're not actually they're only used a huge great um, loads of metal from huge great strokes of it they're that good um, at using a ferro rod they're only using the end anyway um, so for anybody who's pretty proficient at using a ferro rod um, uh, I'll offer this one up for sale and let me know you get on obviously use that bit when that bit wears out it'll be that bit and then you can start shaving away this and use that um, into your old man's beard so when the flame starts going you start burning that as well which is um, boiled linseed uh, cherry wood which is seasoned and oiled so it should burn if you understand me but yeah that's my rationale about uh, my new ferro rods on that one I didn't draw quite so high, quite so deep 
and I'll put a groove there so if that's sacrificial what I'll end up doing and that's what prototypes are I'll end up doing them like that let me know what you think a bit Instagram's lit up <laughs> um, yeah uh, there's plenty, plenty of interest with the um, spurs um, I've got a bit of a critic now we'll uh, try and open his mind a minute anyway I had a bit of a casualty with the um, uh, Kydex press. Normally I, I crank it down to get to the last, you know, in terms of how much torque I'm going to put on it for an old woodworker's voice. And I bring a G clamp in and clamp it between the, the two jaws of the work mate and then down. And just as I did the last little crack, it actually split the wood. So what I'm going to do is glue down through the, the grain of the wood as it goes like that. Uh, so it's set and then I'm going to try and put like, a metal plate across there. Most of my work goes in this way. Um, but if, like I said, if I put a metal plate in there to uh, support these top edges here, then it doesn't really matter how much uh, to, uh, pressure I'm using the G-clamp, I shouldn't split that again, which was a bit of a shame. Um, yeah. Don't cobble together anyway, but uh, yeah, it's a woodworker's voice. So uh, a lot of people use their uh, quench plates for D2 in this sort of thing, where you release it up and then you can actually drop it down, crank it up, but obviously not too much because pressure's there, but not here. And then when that's up to a fair amount, I can put a G clamp there and a G clamp, um, a speed clamp. The little jewels just fit underneath inside there because it's only up off the orange bits of a work mate uh, but I put too much in on that one and I cracked it about through there so that's a shame but uh, adjust steel plate steel plate that sh then should in my brain work onwards and upwards uh, antler right. generally speaking you'd use a mask I'd recommend it, but when you come to do an antler, even though the blade on this is only going to be skipping, don't even think of working with antler without a mask on. Just don't. All right. All right. Hmm. Come on, battery. Keep going, battery. Hmm. I don't want that on Instagram, to be honest. I got this one guy who's really took the spur to heart. But I'm not interested anymore, so I'm going to watch Poldark. six blades and uh, I shall get that away to you at some point this week Mike the spur aggressive ah, jumping look see man I can take the pain then it's there to give grip when you want it funky little Necker. Um, 
but yeah, tomorrow I'll clean this up and WD the sheaf out. Um, got a little bit of packing to do. I'd like to get some leather work away. Um, but yeah, I've got one guy who's just really taken this design to heart. Strange. Strange. Patch a layer. Wish it's blades out. Bow dark.